It's been three days, and this prophet has yet to show himself. I hope I'm not making a huge mistake by trusting you. War Chief, the clans are assembling as you ordered, but it will take them some time to reach us. Then we must prepare this camp immediately. I want my warriors to have food and proper lodgings when they arrive. Yes, War Chief. Warrior, has there been any word from Grom Hellscream? He and the Warsong clan were supposed to have been here by now. No, War Chief. We haven't heard from Hellscream in some time. Damn it, Grom. Where the hell are you? Okay. This is. Ah, god damn it. That your quest journal has been updated. This is, for the most part, in order to what base the. Shut up. Up. I do not want to. I do not want to have to edit the uh, settings to mute the audio. Back and forth between the gold mine and your closest great hall. Here are a few additional peons. To increase the rate of gold collection, order them to harvest from the same. What do you want? The amount of gold that you currently possess is displayed in the upper right portion of your screen. As peons return to your great hall with gold, your gold stockpile increases. This god uh, uh, to produce additional peons to construct the rest of your base to train a peon shut your great hall up i already done it is now a train peon training a unit takes time i've had enough of this <laughs> i'll make sure to bring the audio back before the uh the end of the mission cinematic okay this is for the most part what the Warcraft series has been about. It's been about base management, building up your base while attempting to defend it to eventually take over the enemy base. And there's no enemy base on this map for us to destroy, so we're just going to have to go through the tutorial parts of building our base and then moving across the map. We don't really need a terribly strong force to do that, so it won't take us too long. Remember, this is the beginning of the game. Where is that friggin' peon that I ordered? Units are divided up into a few different types. You have hero units, like Thrall here, who are more powerful and uh, more resilient, and if killed, have to be revived through this altar of storms here. Also have special abilities down here. Then there are the basic gr uh, grunts, or the, not the grunts, the uh, builder units peasants or peons or whatever, acolytes, whatever they're called, but whatever specific faction you're playing as, this peon here is an example of one. A peon can do a number of different things. A peon can chop lumber, giving us the resource we need. A peon could build gold, or can mine gold, which is another resource that we need for doing everything. Gold is a little bit more useful than lumber, and gold can only be harvested from the gold mines. You can also get some gold by killing random creatures wandering around in the world in this game. Lumber is a little different. It is trees. It's made out of trees. It grows everywhere. Sometimes you're going to want to chop trees down for nothing more than granting access to the land that they occupy for building, basically deforestation. It's going to take a little while for this peon to actually get that tree down, although he's pulling, uh, as you see, he's getting wood even though he had not down the tree yet. That doesn't make any sense, but just a video game. Peons can also build things. Now, in order to get Thrall down there, he's going to need backup. So, in order to give him backup, I will build a barracks. Barracks, uh, I'm going to bring all these other peons to help him build it. Ah, what, they're not going to do it? Oh, whatever. Okay, go back to mining gold. Chumps, you're not helping. Peon can build well, any structure that needs to be built. You're going to need a peon to do it. With the exception of, like in Warcraft 2, there were some naval units that you needed special ships to build. But the peon is going to be building everything that we're building here. Uh, the more peons you have, the more resources you can gather at one time. But your characters, 
and your ability to, uh, your ability to create more units is not infinite. It's based on a number of different factors, and this game is rather has a little bit more of an insidious way of preventing you from just amassing a massive amount of units. And that is the upkeep. We're not going to see it really come into play here. Only up to 40 food, which is can anywhere be between 20 and 40 different units. You want to go and just not... You want to maintain as small of a standing army as you can while still uh, being as powerful as you can because the more you have, the higher your upkeep becomes. And say, notice every time this guy brings lumber back or every time these guys bring gold back, it's plus 10. It adds 10 to our reservoir of gold or lumber. If we raise it to a low upkeep, it will only bring back like 7 instead of 10. Your resource procurement becomes slowed. A high upkeep with even more units drops it down to like three or four or something like that. So you really don't want to do that because your resources become constrained and hard to sort of encounter uh, counter uh, like resource requiring things, you know. Okay, the barracks is built and has been finished for some time. He's building a war mill, like a lumber mill. But with this, I can train grunts. Uh, four of them should do it. And I'll set the rally point over here so that's where they all go. Oh, I know, I'm going to need five grunts. All right. Now, this barracks will just build all of the grunts that we need. And then, we will, uh, then we'll be able to send Thrall along the way. You can actually do this with few. I did it while playing the game earlier with three grunts. But the tutorial wants to build wants to build four or five, so whatever. With the war mill, we can upgrade some things. Right now, we only have grunts, so we can upgrade their melee weapons and their armor, make them more powerful units. This is a way of increasing the strength of your, of your um, army without increasing their numbers. So... I'm not really, it's not necessary to do that now, but I'm going to do it anyway, just because we can. And, okay, apparently we need to also build a burrow according to the things there. So, you have to, another resource you have to keep track of is food. You need enough food to maintain your army. And that's involved, that's building orc burrows here or farms as in the human campaign all that kind of stuff. So here we are building a farm. Of course building anything requires resources and you gotta make sure you have those before you start building anything and you don't waste resources on building unnecessary farms or building farms that you aren't going to need or use. This is an unnecessary farm but I'm building it because it's part of one of the objectives. Let's, um, how many peons do we have? 20. Uh, 20 total units. This burrow should bring it up to, what, 30? 30, 30 food? Whatever. Only have one more grunt to train before, before he, uh, before we're ready to go. There, we have our we have our five grunts. Now we're gonna move down a ways. Ah, shit. Can't wait to get through this tutorial. I hate this stupid muting everything. When the orcs lost the second war, oh look, their humans are attacking. Let's get down there and defend it. When the humans won the second war, they went and sort of imprisoned all of the orcs they could find. Some of them, of course, managed to escape. 
that imprisonment. So it wasn't like every single one of them was interred, but it uh, most of them seemed like they were. Get your ass down there. I'm bringing a peon for a reason, not just being an idiot. Although I imagine some of them did manage to avoid being captured. Like, it seems like Grom Hellscream wasn't captured. And that's an individual going after here. Now, Grom Hellscream was a character from Warcraft 2, I believe he came in in the Beyond the Dark Portal expansion. This was unnecessary, but, you know, I'll use that peon to fix that guard tower. Destroy this one. Uh, beyond the Dark Portal expansion, where there were hero units in that game. Although they're not quite the same thing as hero units in this game, they were more or less just regular units that had higher stats. Oh yeah, only Thrall's attacking that tower. Grom obviously survived the war, and has been captured by the Alliance, the Human Alliance, and Thrall's trying to go and rescue him. Thrall is not the bloodthirsty individual that you saw characters like Blackhand, the first war chief of the Horde, or um, or, or Gorgrim Doomhammer, the war chief during um, Warcraft 2. Here we are, we're moving through a human village, and, and uh, Thrall doesn't have any interest in, say, burning it to the ground or anything like that. All he wants to do is... Uh, move his move his way through, escape, and he's only attacking them because they have Grom Hellscream captive. He's a little bit more level-headed than most most orcish war chiefs that we have seen up until this point. Uh, it's not really necessary to kill everybody. We'll kill the ones we have to. Like that one. No point in really doing that with the peon. I already have enough resources to do everything I need to do. Okay, we're freeing um, captured orcs now. This, uh, this shaman was held captive, and this shaman has the has powers. It removes all buffs and slows the movement of speed of a, an enemy by five. Uh, the shaman is not going to be terribly useful in a direct fight. Isn't really that capable of damaging enemies. We'll do it though. Like look at this attack he's doing. Also a ranged unit, but in a straight up fight, the shaman's going to get his ass kicked. That's a ranged unit. There a rifleman. A dwarf, I guess. They have better technology, I guess, than everybody. But that kind of ranged unit is specifically a combat-oriented ranged unit. So isn't as weak as a shaman in a direct fight, but lacks any sort of special abilities beyond the ranged fighting. Now we have more grunts and a shaman. Our little army here is starting to get stronger. Powerful army with a hero unit leading them is pretty fierce. Now, oh shit, see this shaman's going to get killed if I don't do anything about that. Get out of there, shaman. Okay, he's going to survive. One of the weaknesses that the orcs have in this game, and have always really had, is an inability to heal their units. That was always an advantage that the human side of the campaigns always had, was that they could heal their injured units through spells or whatever. This, this guy's at 76 HP, and he's going to remain that way until either this mission ends or he dies. There's nothing I can really do about that at the moment. He will probably die when I move through here. These guard towers will attack the shamans, and he will die. So I'm going to 
separate them and have the rest of these grunts and thrall breach the door. Then when we get through, we'll take out those guard towers, although I think that might actually be unnecessary. The AI in this game has a knack for targeting the weakest opponent they can find, as opposed to random ones, which is what the earlier Warcraft games did. Seems like a long way away from the MMORPG that this series has become most known for nowadays. The game World of Warcraft has got to have a bigger, uh, uh, bigger existence in perception than the game Warcraft 3 or 2 or whatever. Okay, I'm going to uh, unmute the audio because we're coming up on a cinematic. No, not the music. We're under attack! Yes, Lord Chief. The spirits are rescued. Rescued Grom. Grom, are you alright? I'm fine. Luckily, they only injured my pride. Great, because we're getting out of here now. We're leaving the human lands for good. Finally. Follow me. I have an idea. <laughs> we can set sail on the humans' own ships. <laughs> Perfect. But we'll need to wait for the rest of the horde. The horde is assembled, War Chief. We await only your command. Now, go, young Thrall. Sail west to the lands of Kalimdor. It is there that you will find your destiny. It is there that your people's salvation will be assured.